Uh, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we have Chandrika just finishing off in the previous session, so I'll kick off now. So um, this is the plenary session, the closing session, uh, where we uh, thank everyone for their participation and also have a few closing remarks. Uh, so yeah, just firstly, like to thank all the participants uh, for your time today and also um, thank our panelists, our keynote speaker, uh, and also um, our, no. Hi, Chandrika. Yeah, and um, yeah, thank all of the contributors, uh, particularly for our breakout sessions as well. Uh, it, it's been fascinating to see uh, the, the range of speakers and the depth of knowledge and the relevance uh, to, to real-time situations that are happening, uh, not just in our own Western Hemisphere here or in South Asia and Oceania, but also to see what's happening uh, across the globe. And, and that was fascinating to see some of those breakouts. And all of the sessions are recorded, so we'll be able to, to catch up on some of those. So just to let uh, Chandrika know, I've just started with a vote of thanks for um, all of the speakers, the panelists, the moderators, and also um, a thanks to the people in the back end as well to be able to put this on as well, the Prime Secretariat. Um, but yeah, uh, to finish off, uh, a few uh, words about uh, Peer and me and also our reflections on the Global Forum. So I might hand over to Chandrika to kick off and then I will also... Um, uh, as well, add a few words as well. I think it's been, in, as you said, you know, I'll add my thanks to uh, what our, you know, to Rob's uh, and and from from. Uh, it's been just been an incredible last twenty four hours. Um, and what we are doing, it's and this is this session is not about conclusions. It's about the possibilities of the future. It's uh, about a prelude to what will come, uh, because I think what we've done over the last 24 hours is about building a community of, of a variety of voices uh, that came in together to talk about how we create that RME community and RME um, ecosystem. So that those conversations and stories that were shared, um, I think they resonated and they inspired us, right? didn't they, uh, Rob? I mean, there was really, really the conversations, of this, so many stories that are staying with us about collaboration, about learning, about, uh, you know, from different geographies, different communities, different spaces. Uh, and I think one thing that we really, uh, with, at least resonated with me, and I, I don't know what you think about it, was the way and the uh, different directions from which how sustainability was uh, approached. Uh, it was not a singular, uh, I think it was again and again, it was emphasized that sustainability is not just necessarily, it's diverse, it's not singular. And even it's how you look at the idea of social impact when you chat, look at some of these, how you approach SDGs is also contextual. Uh, so we will not homogenize any of those ideas. It's about diversity and it's about engaging with those things in diversity. What do you think? Uh, what stayed with you, Rob? Yeah, I think that resonated with me. I think the um, our, our first, after the keynote, we had a discussion about sustainability in the future of business schools um, uh, by chancellors um, and also heads of business schools and also Global Compact. And uh, yeah, the nuanced understanding of sustainability is quite important, I think, to advance uh, SDGs and responsible business. And uh, we've sort of gone away from the, the ubiquitous general notion of sustainability. I quite often talk about Eccleson's triple bottom line. He even said that, you know, that the concept is outdated uh, or was uh, taken up in ways that he didn't really want to happen. So I think we we really need to get down to a deeper level. I think that nuanced approach, particularly with, um, you know, it's fantastic having this across, you know, uh, the region and having you know, an Indian chapter involved in the last Western Hemisphere, as it says, uh, session, uh, because of the, you know, the cultural differences, I think, um, are being uh, bridged, I think, more and more with the internationalization or, or continued internationalization of our education system. Um, you know, for example, you know, probably a half of my class this year is actually from India. Um, so it, it's very interesting to be able to talk about these issues and we can't necessarily just talk about this is our country perspective from now on because of that fact of internationalization. Uh, that's been very interesting and that's sort of come out in, in our discussions as well. 
I think one of the other things that really kept coming up was the whole issue of pedagogy and how pedagogy and I find triggered something within the community and created a community of learners. Uh, and uh, we've seen how that has impacted us as both as learners and also as educators. You know? So, and how do we create those spaces where experiential learning uh, becomes or and different uh, ways uh, of embedding ways of pause and reflect moments become a part yeah. of the student's life and journey. Uh, and not just the students, we're also talking of the larger us as educators. So uh, where we make learning more playful, more enjoyable, so to say. Yeah, that's right. And um, I, I couldn't jump into every session, but I did jump into the analytics section, uh, the, the session there today, because I had a feeling they'd be talking about AI and they were. So thank you, uh, presenters there. And I'd recommend actually everybody to, to go and have a look at that recording because uh, it's really at the cutting edge of uh, pedagogy and AI uh, and grappling with these issues. And it was very heartening as a I-5 champion to be able to hear them talk about how they were um, at the end looking at I-5 uh, and how that actually relates to AI. And obviously, um, you know, I've got a few notes up there, up there just to summarise some of the things they were saying. But, you know, the interesting thing about AI is that we, we can't forget the human element in, in our work and our education, and that is, I wouldn't say as a dividing line, but is something that is very tangible in the way we d distinguish between knowledge uh, gained and how we use also the analytical tool of AI. Uh, and I put my own conclusion about that I always talk to students because I use it regularly in class in various ways, um, talking about fast and slow knowledge and how yeah, we really do need to not forget about this, the slow do deep engagement with sustainability and responsible business because we can get trapped into thinking this fast knowledge is all we have and it's the, the latest thing. But I think that deep knowledge will separate uh, graduates from, you know, the good graduates from the not so good graduates, I think. And that's that's really important in terms of responsible business when we're dealing with the paradoxes that we have and AI won't be able to necessarily um, can help us with those paradoxes, but um, there's going to be more to it and engaging with humans is really important in terms of uh, dealing with the paradox of uh, sustainability. I missed that session on AI, but I think uh, listening to you, Rob, I'm going to go back and look at that uh, recording. Um, but one of the things that stood out for me was the whole uh, you know, underlining uh, that the need for climate literacy and embedding climate literacy into business schools and why we need that and why we need more and more educators. And, and not just as a cherry on top, but as something that we embed across uh, different verticals into a business school where it becomes an ethos of what a business school uh, stands for. So that was again something, and I think uh, the Australia, New Zealand uh, chapters doing uh, a lot of schools there are doing a lot of good work. Uh, and we're hoping that in India, we will also, you know, uh, some of the schools, we'd, we've done the climate literacy training and some of us, us will roll that out in some of our business schools. So that's something that we're hoping to do. Um, I just want to very quickly touch on, you know, later in the year, we will, as a chapter in India, have a chapter meet, which is on 5th uh, December. We are doing certain case study workshop focused on SDGs. Uh, there's a paper development workshop uh, also coming up, uh, I-5. And it's about building the larger ecosystem that we will try to keep uh, supporting. Yeah, fantastic. And I think the last uh, thing that I might, or two, two final things that I'll say before we move on to some notices about uh, PME uh, generally uh, is the idea of uh, hope and pedagogy. It was mentioned uh, today as well um, in you know disruptive times, resource scarcity, uh, you know, multilateral. Uh, conflicts. I think uh, one of the things that I five and the pedagogy does is it helps us ground our ethical position. Um, yes, it's a pedagogy, playful pedagogy, but there's an ethical position in there that we can look at. So if you haven't looked at it, have a look at that. You can easily upload it into AI and get a summary of it if you want to. Um, but you know, dive deep into the book uh, and and uh, the playbook and, and have a look at that. I would very much encourage people to do that. Um, one last little notice for us in the chapter. Uh, we have a new date uh, of our face-to-face -face meeting at the 6th of De December, trying to um, 
look at the different conferences down around that region and making sure that we don't conflict with them. And that date, I think, lands us between a few conferences. So looking forward to a face-to-face -face event uh, very soon. There are certain dates coming up, which you should we should probably uh, let the community know about, which is about the Prime 2025 Global Forum, which will be in Cornell University. And so please, Ma, I think the dates will be communicated by the Prime Secretariat very soon. And uh, so please look out for that date and we look, hope, look forward to seeing many of you there on that date. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, ways to get involved. I think this is, um, you know, I think one of the future dimensions or future pathways for peer and me globally, uh, and particularly the Australian chapter, is looking at um, you know, engaging with students. If we're thinking about impact, wanting to have impact, that is an area where I feel we could do a lot more. Uh, and it was great to see the um, uh, PGS awards given out recently uh, for student engagement. So that was fantastic. So lots to get involved with. Um, and also, as we all know, uh, if you're in a reporting round this year, uh, peer me Commons and SIP reports, uh, uh, we have that happening at the moment. Um, and also look out for future climate literacy training uh, on the uh, PME website itself, not just in the chapter, because there are things happening globally that you can tune into. Okay, so we're almost wrapping it up here. Uh, and also just want to thank Chandrika uh, for being able to host this session together uh, and have some great discussions offline about um, some of the things that are challenging PME in our chapters and ways in which we can work. Uh, together forward to advance peer me. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for you know this uh, this juggle bandi as we would call it within the Indian context. Uh, and as we said, this is not a conclusion, but a beginning of a possibility, a prelude to more conversations across community. And we do want to thank Prime Secretariat for anchoring this all. Uh, you know, many of I think uh, thank you so much for being there and making this happen. I think we, we are yep. echoing, we were saying what a large section of the community is probably saying uh, uh, directly to you, uh, Sophie, um, and others there in Prime Secretariat. Yeah, and looking at uh, some of the chats there, thank you. Uh, people out there are thanking um, the Secretariat and the speakers, et cetera. So yeah, uh, and just acknowledge that people in the audience there um, engaging and uh, appreciating the, the Global Forum. Okay, so I think we can call it a close. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. Wishing all the best, have a great day or evening, wherever you may be.